It's a group we started in March of 2011. It's called itsourconomy.us. And its uh, mission is to educate, organize, and mobilize people to build democratic economic institutions locally. The reason behind that is, is for a couple of purposes. I mean, one is that we have tremendous needs right now in our communities for jobs, education, health care. And these are needs that we're going to have to start meeting on our own and through things like public banks and alternative currencies, um, community land trusts, we can start to, to meet our needs. But it also works to uh, reduce the wealth divide and begin to shift political power in our direction. So that's why we took that on. The other thing is that uh, you know, we believe that there's a two-track approach to transforming the country. One track is protest, resistance, civil disobedience, civil resistance, and that's what we did through the Occupy movement. We have a website called Occupy Washington, D.C. that includes all that. And then the other part is building the world we want. And so it's Stop the Machine, Creating a New World. So Stop the Machine is our Occupy project, Creating a New World is the It's Our Economy project. So we try to do both. that we've launched. Um, it's a broader campaign than just trying to get access to health care. It's about building leadership in the communities, helping people learn about how social transformation occurs, the fact that we actually have the right to health and many other rights, um, but they're being violated and we start to fight for them because health care isn't just about access, or health isn't just about access to health care. It really is you have to have proper education, a job and a living wage, a clean environment. Know, absence of violence, these types of things all impact our health. When I was, after the Affordable Care Act passed and I was traveling around, it, it just became more and more obvious that while the single payer movement is large, it faces the same obstacles as all the other movements. And we're not going to win fighting for single issues. We have to understand that all of our issues are connected and start to fight together and to be more strategic. In our and, and, and single payer or improve Medicare for all? fits into economic democracy. Economic democracy is interesting. Some things you can do on a local community level, some things are better done on a national level. For example, a worker owned cooperative, that can be very local. A community council trying to solve community problems, very local. But healthcare, if you really want to have a, an efficient healthcare system, you want a large pool of people. And so a national healthcare plan that provides universal coverage for everyone from zero till, till death, uh, even prenatal, I should say, pre-zero <laughs> till death, uh, is really the most efficient. And it's also the most democratic. Right now we're in a situation with the insurance companies, they're in the middle of our relationship with the doctor or the health provider. And the insurance company says, no, you can't go to the doc that doctor. No, you can't use that, uh, that, that uh, procedure. No, you can't use that treatment. When you get to something like Medicare, at that level of our healthcare system, you don't have the insurance company in the middle. You have a uh, doctor-patient relationship deciding how to use it. So that's the most democratic. And also the, is the most democratic because it gives the most freedom to people and to businesses. Because people can then leave their job, go take care of their kid, change jobs, take care of an older, older parent, you know, do what needs to be done in life and not lose their health care. So they have real freedom. Businesses also have more choice and more freedom because you have a set amount you pay for health care. It's not going to be this, oh my God, a 17% increase in the premium this year. You know, I have to fire some people, or I can't hire people because I'm not sure what health care is going to cost. And so it's best for business, it's best for individuals, and it's best for the government in that you get a control, much more uh, control over health care costs. So it's the most democratic approach. As I said, some issues can be local, some issues are better national. And some are international. Climate change. That one, you know, is one that has to be dealt, dealt with, with, with all countries. But countries like ours that are the lead polluters of carbon, with China now, China caught up to us, but we have put so much carbon in the air in the last 50 years that we are the lead climate change causer. We've got to take leadership on that. But it needs to be an international solution. Now, TPP is the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And on our It's Our Economy set, we have a, a separate section called Flush the TPP. To help you remember, Toilet Paper Plus. And flush to tpp.org. And what, what that's a, the Transpacific Partnership is the largest trade agreement in history. It's been negotiated by President Obama and his Treasury President for the last three years in secret. It's going to do tremendous damage to our economy, and it's going to be a global, global corporate coup. 
It's going to empower corporations even beyond already where they are. In fact, it's not really a trade agreement. What it really is is a backdoor for corporations to get what they want. Uh, they have not been able to get through Congress. They get a lot through Congress, almost everything they want. But they have not been able to, for example, restrict internet privacy. They have not been able to uh, even reduce further the regulation of big finance. Uh, you know, they have not been able to get rid of Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, and th this is a backdoor to help corporations have more power, and it gives them a lot more power in a lot of ways. So. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a problem that the, the government has learned that people know what free trade is about and that it's not good. And so they don't even call it a free trade agreement. They call it this you know, nebulous trans-Pacific partnership. That sounds it's really a partnership, cool. not a trade agreement. It sounds very friendly, but um, <laughs> it's something that we absolutely have to stop for many reasons. And basically, what it's going to do is, is it's going to degrade our environmental, our labor, and our consumer protections um, around the world. It's going to create a form of economic colonialism um, where Corporations with large capital will control countries because they can threaten to remove their capital. That's one thing. That's one thing in the provisions is no restrictions on capital movement. So a country goes into a little country, like a big bank, which has trillion, a trillion dollar you know capacity, goes into a little country like Vietnam, and if Vietnam doesn't do something they want, they can threaten to pull their capital out, and that country's destroyed. Crash the economy, right? So it's um, it's a huge problem for the health. Uh, of our of our world as well. Um, what we're really doing is uh, exporting our failed market-based healthcare system around the world, um, giving pharmaceutical corporations kind of this evergreen patent so that they can continue continue to keep extending the patent on uh, current medications and keep them unaffordable. Force other health systems to pay their high prices, which will degrade them further. It's um, it's something that people around the world, as they learn about it, are starting to fight back. But the real fight has got to happen here in the United States, and so we urge people to go to Flush the TPP. There are two key points where we need to, to stop this. One is um, President Obama is pushing for something that used to be called fast track. It means that it, it subverts the democratic process. It means that the trade agreement is negotiated, goes to Congress, up or down vote, no debate, no amendments, nothing. Um, now they're calling it trade promotion authority. He needs Because people know what fast track is, right, and, and it's not very popular, so they right. got to change the name it's kind to of try like to fool people. Blackwater, you got to keep following the name. <laughs> so, um, What's it called now? Academy. Academy, that's right. their third name. So, um, yeah. so trade promotion authority needs it by this summer in order to continue negotiating. We need to make sure that Congress does not give him that. And then in October, when it comes to Congress, we need to put pressure on and say, absolutely do not vote for this. They're trying to do this in secret because if, if we find out about it, and they know the public knows about it, they're going to be less likely to be able to get away with it. They are, they're in secret because it's unpopular. Right. If it was a popular thing to do, they'd be out in the open parading it and applauding it and cheering about it. When they do something in secret, that's where we got to work. And I'll just give you one example of what, the, what this law does to give people a sense of how it really is a global corporate coup. It makes corporations more powerful than governments. Uh, for example, I, I'll take Vietnam again, where the income, median income is $1,000 a year. It's a poor country, uh, still struggling from recovering from the Vietnam War and the French War before that. So decades of war, they're struggling still. And um, uh, if, let's say, Vietnam enters the TPP and the, they pass an environmental law, then a big corporation can sue Vietnam. A much wealthier corporation in the country is can sue Vietnam in a trade tribunal, a separate justice system called a trade tribunal. And the tribunal is made up of three judges. Those judges most commonly will be corporate lawyers on leave from their corporation and then deciding the case and going back to the corporation. The kind of things they can sue for, Vietnam passes an environmental law or a labor law or a health law, the corporation can say, that's going to cost us $10 million in profits. And they can sue them for the lost profits. So a case that's going on right now under NAFTA is that a, a corporation in Delaware, of course, uh, called Lone Pine Industries, is suing the government of Canada for $250 million because they banned fracking around the St. Lawrence River, and this company wanted to frack there. And so they expect to lose, you know, because they can't frack there, they're losing $250 million. So they're suing Canada for their profits for fracking, <laughs> destroy the environment the, under the St. Lawrence River, and they want to be able to do that right. because they were expecting profits. It really is, a, it, it, you know, the, the, where we are right now is a, 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 both a US domestic economy and a world economy is corporate profits come first, before the people, before the planet. We need to reverse that. 
We need to put people and planet before profit. And we're not doing that. And the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP, which needs to be flushed, uh, the TPP in, entrenches that idea of profit before people and planet. Yeah, it's one of those decisions that, like Citizens United, if we look back and, and you know, we'll see how devastating it is and wish that we had stopped because all of us are victims of class warfare Being waged on us by the 1% Because these greedy banksters rob the country Leaving us without the means to pay the rent Because the last time that we had a decent government Was about 1932 Because we the people are supposed to run this country But instead it's all run by 